Well, hello, glue troopers, and welcome to Outside the Tarvis. And I've got so much stuff in there gassing out right now that I can't breathe in there <laughs> with the doors open. So, uh, end of the building day, thought I'd come in uh, and make a quick video. Took a couple of deep breaths, almost passed out, and said, you know what, let's do this out in the yard today. Ha ha ha. So, here we are. And what did I get done today? Well, quite a bit. Uh, I got that mini tank M113 built, and also the BRDM. Wow. Uh, the 113 went together without any arguments. Uh, great little kit. I'm very impressed with it. Uh, I put the interior in it uh, so that because the back door does open but all the top hatches I have closed. I mounted both machine guns sort of quasi Vietnam style and <laughs> some of those parts were so small that even tweezers uh, had trouble uh, working with them and I mean, they have the, the little tiny lift rings and everything, which go behind the headlights. So you put them on and the headlights on in front of them, like, you know, three levels of magnification. You're hearing like, steady, steady lodge, steady. And, uh, but I got them in there. The BRDM was more cantankerous. Uh, it had metal axles, which would not adhere with uh, glue very well to the uh, tire, to the wheels. Although it does have rubber tires. Nice touch. And it just a lot of stuff it says the structure cut off a half millimeter there's a lot of parts you're cutting off of the big framing members and everything to uh, to get stuff to fit okay but i got it together it did require some putty it's 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 a tougher build uh the nice thing about one on three is it had that big one piece bob and one piece shell which made for everything to fasten onto so it was much easier the brdm is more like one of those old palmer cars that you have to do the sides and the front and the back and everything and that made it a little trickier but the fit was okay uh, so the metal axles I actually had to get in there with the with my cutters and pop a chunk off because they were way too long and the uh, again a gazillion tiny little parts that were just you know, is this, am I putting this in the right place instructions could be a little better uh, but I, I did get it all together and it, it the nice thing about armor is when parts are a little, eh, maybe it's not, yeah, well, it's been beat up. It's an old tank, you know, it's an old armor vehicle. Arr, you know, battle damage. Great excuse for all your mistakes. Battle damage. And uh, I'll, I'll probably put together, I think I'm going to put a little, together a little diorama with uh, just like a crossroads with uh, the crossroads obscured by trees. So they're both sailing down the road towards each other in, you know, chance encounter. And uh, I did manage to lose a few parts. One, one thing even holding the pieces over the box down low when you clip sometimes they <laughs> parts in space pretty sure two or three pieces of that brdm are in orbit right now so oh, there goes one um anyway uh so uh the what i would recommend is uh hold it down over the, over the box and keep your hand over or put a piece of plastic or towel or something when, when you pull the clipper because the, the, just the parts are so tiny and it's a fairly thick plastic and, and, and when they let go, I, there's got to be some kind of potential kinetic energy management formula that would explain how you can clip such a tiny piece with so little pressure, pressure and it can sail across three zip codes. Um, if NASA ever figures that one out, they're going to have a new way to launch rockets. I wonder what the G-force is on a part that takes off like that. Anyway, you know, it's like, you ever do that with the bottle caps? You know, like, I can never do it very well. Some kids, I mean, they, and they were pretty accurate. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Where you put the bottle, you take up all the old bottle caps that had the little sharp star edges on them. You know, they took an actual bottle on there to get off, you know, and kids would take them, put them on their thumb, and, and they'd put that spin on You know, like death frisbees. Um, anyway, so... I also got to work on the Stenson, and we've all had this problem. And I, I had slathered just a little bit of putty and then taken the plastic razor and, and cleaned it off to make that uh, trim tab go away, just sealing up the, 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 the gap around it, which is very small. And then when I went and hit it with the Mr. Surfacer, the thing still showed. I'm, and I don't know if it was shrinkage as the stuff hardened or what. So I put a slightly more liberal dose on it a second time and it went away. But we've all had, I guarantee you all had that time where you swear you're putting three or four things of putty in there. You're slathering it on, scraping it down. When you sand it down and spray paint, the bloody seam or whatever still shows. You're like, it defies physics. But 
anyway, I made the progress on that. And my battle plan is hit it with the gloss black, let that harden clear coat it, then hit it with the, uh, tape off the windows because I'm going to have them as gloss black, and then uh, hit it with the yellow because the yellow should show better with the uh, gloss black as a backing. Um, and then uh, once that hardens clear coat, then tape that off, hit it with the blue, and then just uh, hand detail what's left after that and go find some, some wheels for it. So that'll take a little while to get done. I got working on the Faller helicopter, that uh, Boeing Vertol 107, and I want to do a nice build with that. I'm going to have it, you know, like on its wheels with the doors open. So uh, I painted the interior already. It, it's not going to be like trying to hyper detail. It's a fairly basic kit with nominal interior detail. But I want it to be something that would look good on a railroad layout or something like that. You know, it's sort of the standard for that. Uh, so I want to make a nice casual build out of it. And the nice thing is it has that piece that goes over the top of the fuselage that so you don't have to fill in that seam because it's covered by a spine that covers the... Uh, uh, shaft for the forward rotor and for those who don't know the engines are in the back of those things they have several transmissions and uh, of course they have a transmission that uh, goes to the rotor the aft rotor but they also have a long power shaft uh, uh, rod. it's a shaft that goes across the if you're inside the helicopter it's going across the roof and it uh, goes into a transmission up the forward section there's no engine up forward that's just a transmission and of course that turns the the forward rotor and of course they're geared to intermesh uh when i was in when i used to ride in chinooks in the army you could you could hear that uh thing up there that shaft up there going across and that's why it's the noisiest helicopter in the army but bugger would move um you know, i don't know if it's still the case but the chinook was the fastest helicopter in the army for a long time I think that makes sense because all the rotor power goes into driving the helicopter. You don't, you're not robbing any power to run the anti-torque rotor. So all, all of your rotor energy is in the thrust. I haven't really done anything on the, on the uh, Perfect Grade Gundam today. I might do a little bit after I finish this. I, I like to get a little bit done on every day. Any little baby steps don't get in a rush because it's so complicated. It's easy, you know, like, rah, 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 and get a little flustered. So, you know, take it a step at a time. So that's really all the model building I've done today. Uh, we did not take uh, you know who to the VET that got rescheduled for tomorrow. So anyway, I swear she's the most popular thing on this channel. Maybe she just got a cat videos. Uh, so that's where we're at, guys. That's all the news that is the news out here at Max's Models. And uh, can I? Yeah, I think it's safe to go back inside now. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the Tarvis. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in. Hope you have a wonderful evening. And uh, I was, yesterday it was rainy and nasty, and then today we were rewarded with a beautiful, beautiful day. We did get out and get a few things done. That's why I didn't get more model building done. You know, real life stuff. You got to go do that, you know. It's like work and earning money so you can eat. But, oh well, these are the prices we pay so that we can build models. Guys, take care of yourselves. And as always, <laughs> model on. Hey guys, I just got inside, I was getting ready to edit the video, and I realized I hadn't checked the mail, and there was an envelope from uh, Mr. Chessel up in Barrie, Ontario, and he says, uh, I'm sending you a few items for my stash for your entertainment efficacions, um, since you've given me and others so much joy on your channel. I appreciate that, uh, Mr. Chessel. Uh, the book, Fall of an Arrow, which is of course about one of my favorite airplanes ever, the Avro CF-105 Arrow. Uh, published in 79, and uh, it's a bit of a technical discussion. <laughs> it was a subject that was almost taboo while uh, Diefenbaker was alive. I know you enjoy reading about different aircraft. I absolutely do. Uh, I know you may have said someone already sent you decals for the Aurora kit for your Arrow, but maybe you can use another set. I, can, <laughs> I never say no to styrene and decals. Uh, da -da -do -do, uh... Maybe someday I'll send you a proper 172nd scale kit from my stash. The Hobbycraft kit has technical issues, and the other kit is Vacuform, which I haven't had the courage to tackle yet, brother. I feel your pain on that one. The CD-ROM is of the Aero Era. Uh, it's a combined movie and slideshow presentation because the program is so old, but I hope you can at least copy the data of your drive and use QuickTime. Yeah, I can do that. I'll make use of it. And the DVD is a history of Canaveral Air Force Station. I look forward to seeing that. Uh, living down there and having toured the place many times, I never get tired of going down to Canaveral. It's just places drips with history. A uh, whole host of information. Um, 
Uh, my wife also supports me in my hobby, and she is a former doll maker and artist. Well, it's like they got something in common. And uh, aren't we lucky to have married and kept the right people? Yes, sir. Yes, we are. Uh, just remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Oh, the greatest uh, uh, from our, our buddy Red Green. Thanks for all your videos and everything you do on your channel. Keep your stick on the ice. And remember, Mr. Chessel. I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs>